doing now. Thank you, Father, for what you will yet do. Lord, we give you glory. We magnify you. We exalt your name. There is none like unto you. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our shield and our buckler, our shelter, our deliverer, our redeemer that is strong the maker of all things, the creator of heavens and the earth. We worship you. 
we magnify you. You are a miracle working God. We give you all the glory. God of faithfulness, God of deliverance, God of healing, we worship you. We adore you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together to your very presence. And so, Father, here we are. We open our heart to receive from you. We come with high expectation that you will touch our life and we never remain the same again. Have your way, dear Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, take over from this point. Reveal Jesus to every situation. Cause us to see Jesus. Cause us to see Jesus. Thank you, Father. Pray it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. We bless the Lord for what he has done in the past two days. We glorify his holy name. He's the one that is working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And we appreciate what he has done already and what he's going to do again. But as a warning here, uh, please prepare your heart with faith to receive from the Lord. Don't doubt. Don't ever doubt what the Lord is going to do here today. Uh, you remember the case of our daddy Zechariah when the angel of the Lord appeared to him, angel Gabriel, and he said, how shall I know this? And the Lord said, okay, you want to know? You'll be muted. You want to know? He knew by these signs he became mute. He became mute. So please don't doubt. God is about to do a quick walk of miracle in our midst. Hallelujah. Power in the world. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 12. You are going to speak the word here today. All of us will speak the word together. And we see God in action. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 12. Verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it's a designer of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Another version says, the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. It's a living word. It's not a dead word. Living organism. Not a dead word. Constant and ever consistent. The ever-present word. The ever-present word. The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is a container of the power. The power of God. Power that can do all things. Anything you can imagine. Power that can do all things. The only thing is God will never lie. The word of God is powerful. There's nothing you can compare with it, with the word of God. No power here on earth and in heaven can be compared with the power which is in the word of God. No, by the same power, he created all things that we see out of those things that were not existed. Hallelujah. The Greek word for power is dunamis, out of which dynamite is taken. A divine dynamite power, out of which dynamite is taken. The potential and the ability to do all things is in the word of God. The potential and the ability to do all things is in the word of God. In 
Isaiah 55, from verse 10 to 11. Isaiah 55, from verse 10 to 11. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and board, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When God has released his word, is what will never go back to him empty. The word of God must accomplish the purpose for which it is being released. It shall prosper in the thing whereunto it is being sent. The word of God has the ability to do exploit beyond human's comprehension. You cannot fathom the extent of the ability of the word of God to do all things. His word is yea and amen. Nothing more than that. Hallelujah. And in the same power, in the same word of God, there is power to revive. Power to revive whatever is dead. By the power in the word of God, it can be brought back to life. It can be resuscitated. There is power to create and recreate in the same word of God. Some years ago, early 90s, I was privileged to watch a video on VHS in those days uh, of evangelist Charles and Francis Hunter, their husband and wife. They used to have a healing school and they normally use healing as practicers. They will bring a man who has a very short hand or a man whose leg has been amputated. They will bring him before the class and tell the student, this is how you are going to pray for a man like this. And you begin to see the leg growing, the hand growing. I have seen a lot of miracles like that. When God will create something out of nothing. God can create something out of nothing. I have seen somebody who has no womb. And God created a womb. He recreated a womb. He recreated a womb for her. And she brought forth. So set to it in your mind tonight. Whatever you might have lost to the enemy, the power of God is present to recreate. Do you believe that? You believe that? Shout hallelujah. Power to restore is also in the word of God. In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel chapter 37, from verse 1, this is the vision that Ezekiel had said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which were full of bones. And I like the way it describes the bones he saw. He said, behold, they were very dry. They were in the open valley. Behold, they were very dry. Beyond any reasonable doubt. It was a hopeless situation. Dry bones. And God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I like the way he answered. He didn't want to say yes or no. If you say yes, God will ask him, now tell us how. And if you should say no, it will be reckoned, I mean, it will be regarded as a faithless prophet. Can these bones live? He said, you know, Father, you alone can determine. And what's the next thing that God told him in verse 4? Prophesy. Brethren, you are going to prophesy tonight. Say, prophesy. 
And as he began to prophesy, the Bible says, bones came to his bones. As he began to prophesy, flesh came. As he began to prophesy, everything was made ready, left, I mean, save for the breath. And God told him again, now prophesy to the uh, for uh, east wind. And the east wind came and breath came into the dead body. And the Bible says, there arose a great army. There is nothing that is too difficult for God to restore. I don't know what you have lost to the enemy. There is restoration in the house tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The power in the word of God will do it. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He said, prophesy. Son of man, prophesy. And say to the wind, thus says the Lord. Not thus said. Remember, I shared with you two days ago that every promise in the Bible, they are ever constant and consistent, ever living word. You will never see in the Bible, thus said the Lord, but thus says the Lord. Say, prophesy. And dry bones became a great army. In Joel chapter 2, from verse 25, the Bible says, the years that cankerworm and locust have eaten, the palmerworm and the caterpillars, God says, I will restore. I don't know what you have lost to the enemy. I don't know what the enemy has taken away from you. Maybe by trick or by force. But God will restore them tonight. I will restore to you the years that locust and cankerworm have eaten. The caterpillar and the palmerworm. My great army which I sent among you. Verse 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am in the midst of you people. God says, I am in the midst of you vine branch. And I am the Lord and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. I declare you will not be ashamed. Every expectation tonight will not be cut off. It doesn't matter how long you have suffered deprivation. Doesn't matter how long you have suffered the loss. Tonight is your night of restoration. Say tonight is my night of restoration. You remember the woman that was referred to as the widow of Nain? She lost her only son and he was being carried out of the gate to be buried and met Jesus. That is in Luke chapter 7. I met Jesus before she passed the gate. And Jesus saw her. She was weeping. And Jesus stopped them. He touched the casket, the coffin, and said, young man, arise. The only son of his mother. The only son. That must be a painful loss. But that day, the young man was restored back to his mother. I don't know what your expectation is tonight. It will come to fulfillment. You remember Lazarus in John chapter 11. Lazarus was dead for how many days? For four days. And Jesus came. They said, by now he stinks. Maybe your situation is stinking. By now, he stinks. Mary said, if you, have, if you had come before now, my brother would have lived. But I know that he will live on the last days. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. The moment you see me, you have seen life. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, he that was dead came forth. Brethren, I have witnessed that before. 
My wife will remember this, and my sister too, and Brother Shola. I've shared this with you before. A woman came into our company crying, shouting, Pastor Ejadeo, our daughter, the only daughter was gone, dead. If you know Zana Hospital in Nagbogo, the girl was taken there. So I followed the woman to the place. I've never prayed for the dead before, before that time. I saw the father carrying the daughter on, on, on his laps, and you could see streams of tears. The nurses, they, were folding, they folded their hands and they were watching. One woman followed me to, the, to that place. We began to pray. We prayed and prayed and nothing happened. Then I heard silently praise. And I, I told the woman, I said, stop. Let's begin to praise God. You raised the daughter of Jairus. You raised Lazarus. Suddenly, the daughter sneezed. She came back to life and was returned back to the parents. I pray tonight, whatever is dead in your life, I prophesy life. Receive life. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is dead, even if it is part of your body that is dead, receive life. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. And the girl was restored back to the parents. And they went home. I waited till the time they were discharged that night. I know that God is here to do exploit. He's here to do much more than that. And I know that tonight he will do it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is power for healing in the world. Power for healing. In 3 John verse 2, Third John has only one chapter. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in what? And be in health, even as thy soul prospers. After the prosperity of your soul, the next thing is to prosper in health. So if there is sickness in your body, Begin to tell that sickness you are in a wrong place. Because this body is the temple of the living God. The time for you to come out is now. There is power for healing. You remember the centurion servant. The centurion servant was sick. And he loved his servant so much. So he sent a message to Jesus to come and heal his servant. But on the way, he came out to me. Jesus said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. And I'm not even worthy to come and meet you. Only say in a word. Speak the word and my servant shall be made whole. Speak how many words? Just a word. A word is enough, brothers and sisters. A word. You don't need many words. A word is enough for your healing. Speak in a word, and my servant shall be made whole. He has made a provision for our healing when he went to the cross at Calvary. The Bible says in, uh, in Isaiah 53, verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are what? We are healed. We are already healed. Not that we are going to be healed. So the provision for your healing is available. You only need to lay hold on it tonight. With faith. Don't doubt, like I said. You remember the woman with the issue of blood. He said, she said in her heart. If I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She suffered for how many years? Twelve years. I don't know how many years you have been suffering under that oppression. But there's always a day of miracle. This is your day of miracle. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You remember Jairus' daughter? She was raised back to life. The blind Bartimaeus received his sight back. Let me share the testimony of a sister with you. She's in the UK. My people will remember this. One morning she called me and she began to cry. We used to pray together on phone. And she said, Hello, I said, which report will you believe? Is it the report of the Lord or the report of the physicians? She said, the report of the Lord. And what God impressed on my heart, I told her, we are going to be praying together for the next seven days. I'll be breaking bread. We break, we break bread every night for the next seven days. On the fourth day, they ask her to come back to do certain tests that we tell them the kind of treatment. And this is a nursing sister, a senior medical person. I'm a personnel. And so she went back for the test. And they said she should come back the third day. And the third day happens to be the last day we are going to pray together. So around 9 a.m. in the morning, she called me and said, Daddy, you remember I've shared that before? Daddy, I said, what happened? They said they couldn't see anything again. God healed her and there was no traces of cancer again. So I tell you, brothers and sisters, tonight, whatever be your case, be ready. God is here in our midst. He will heal and he will deliver. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because the word of God says, by his stripes, we are healed. Not we are going to be healed. We are healed already. He has made provision for our healing. Hallelujah. He has made provision for our healing. I was invited to a learning many years ago. That should be maybe seven, eight years ago. It was a conference like this. I didn't know the team of the conference. The message they sent couldn't get to me. I didn't receive any message. I didn't know what to preach on. I just went there. As I entered the auditorium, the geo was behind the pulpit. He was just encouraging people. And when I entered, he said, praise God, the man has come. The pamphlet or whatever, the program on the table, very close to me, I saw the theme of the program. I said, well, God, take control. Brothers and sisters, I couldn't preach long for a very long time before manifestation started. There was an old man. The man should be above 70. One of his eyes was blind. When God began to move, the man began to shout, I can see, I can see. Without laying on of hand. I'm sharing this with you so that your faith will... Please, let your faith rise tonight in order to receive the benefit of the word. The benefit of the power in the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me share my own personal experience. I used to have a very bad heart. When I say bad heart, my heart was bad. I couldn't climb stairs. I was always in pain. I was always in pains. And I was invited to a program like this at Premier Hotel. They tagged the program Covenant Miracle Explosion. I came into the program. I sat in the midst of the congregation. The first miracle was that one of the protocol officers now came and said, you, you, come. And took me to the front seat. I sat close to the geo. They didn't know me. And when the man of God finished preaching, he began to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, somebody is here. You have a problem with your heart. Raise up your hand. I raised my hand. And there was a man coming out of the congregation. And the man of God said, no, go back. Just lay your hand. I mean, just raise up your hand. As I was raising up my hand, I felt a finger running across my heart. This happened in 1995. And up to today, no more pain. I'm healed and hearty. If God can do that for me, 99, how many years now? 28 years ago. He can do the same thing for you. So there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, it will sprout again. Though a tree may wax old in the earth, and the stem may wax feeble. Yet, at the 
scent of water. Think that tobacco or me at the scent of water, it will sprout, it will bud, and it will bring forth. So there's a hope for you. There's a hope for you. There's, there's a hope for me. Power for deliverance. Remember the madman of gathering? How he met Jesus and he became a changed person. I have witnessed some uncommon miracles. And I know that yours will be added to my experience today. What about power for fruitfulness? In the same word of God. Remember Abraham, Sarah? When the angel of the Lord visited them in Genesis chapter 18. And after they were entertained, the angel turned to Abraham and said, according to the time of life, by this time next year, you'll be a child. Sarah heard in the tent and she laughed. <laughs> she laughed in disbelief. And the angel of the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Is there anything too difficult for God to do? And he repeated the same promise. He said, according to the time of life, by this time next year, your wife will carry a child. And it came to pass in Genesis 21 verse 6. Genesis 21 verse 6. Sarah now confessed. He laughed in rejoicing. He laughed another laugh, another laughter in celebration. He said, God has made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me. I pray tonight, God will make you to laugh. You will laugh in celebration. Say, God has made me to laugh. And all that here will love with me. Who would have thought that Sarah will give suck to a child for Abraham at his old age? Hallelujah. You remember Hannah, who was mocked by Penina. Mocked, made jest of. Maybe you're also waiting for the fruit of the womb, and people are making jest of you. There's a testimony in the house. God will visit you. Very soon you will share testimony here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke 10, 19, the Bible says, Behold, I give you power. Another verse says, Behold, I give you authority. The moment you are in possession of the word of God, you are in possession of, the, of power. You are in possession of power. You are in possession of authority. You can decree and it shall be established. The Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. And light will shine upon thy path. The power to decree is on the inside of you. Brothers and sisters, do you understand what the Bible says? Do you understand that many are the afflictions of the righteous? But God will deliver him from how many? From them all. He will keep him that none of his bones will be broken. Do you understand what the Bible says? That the young lion, they do lack and suffer hunger. But they that trust in the Lord will never lack anything that is good. David said, I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his, son, nor his seed begging for bread. Do you understand what the Bible says? That many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver him from them all. Seven times the righteous will, and how many times will they arise? Seven times. Do you understand that at the end of every dark tunnel, there is a beacon of light? David said in Psalm 10 verse 27, when my father and my mother, when they forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. You will not be forsaken. You will not be stranded. In the name of Jesus, be ready to receive tonight. Hallelujah. Be ready to do what? To receive tonight. And I know, I'm sure, that God is ever faithful, ever sure. He will never deny his word. He will never deny his word. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes when? There's a new dawn breaking on you. A new dawn is breaking on you. I say a new dawn is breaking on you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You have the authority on inside of you. Uh, Elijah demonstrated the same authority when he stood in the palace of Herod and he shut the heavens. 
Because Ahab led the people of Israel to follow after Baal. And he said, as long as the Lord lives, before whom I stand, there shall be no rain nor dew. This years, except at my word, except I release another word. And heaven was closed. Heaven was shut. And when it was time for God to bring rain, in 1 Kings chapter 18, God told Elijah, go and show yourself to Ahab because I want to bring down rain. I want to bring down rain. After that, Elijah slew, you know how Elijah slew the prophet of Baal? Over 400 of them. And from verse 41, I want us to see together. We are praying very soon from verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up and drink, eat and drink, for there is a sand of abundance of rain. Can I have an amen to that? <laughs> there is a sand of what? Of abundance of rain. The next verse. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. He was praying because God said, I want to bring down rain. And said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Everybody said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. The next verse. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there, is, there arised a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say to her, prepare the chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. Now, I will stop there. As he put his head between his knees and he was praying, he told his servant, go and look up into the, at, I mean, into the sea and see whether there will be cloud. The servant went the first time, nothing. The second time, he said, there is nothing. The third time, he said, there is nothing. Brothers and sisters, stop, stop looking for signs. Stop looking for signs. He went the fourth time, the fifth, the sixth time. The seventh time, he saw a little cloud like a man's hand. And like I said, it's enough. Go and tell Ahab to go up to Jezreel or else rain will stop him. Now, where are we going? Elijah said, there is a sun. I can hear the sun of the abundance of rain. Even when there was no cloud, even when there was no signs, even then, even then when there was nothing, brothers and sisters, all you could see is nothing. They have told you that you will continue to manage your health. Maybe that is what the doctors told you. They have told you that you will continue to live on drugs. You have made all effort to better your lot. All you have is nothing. Every effort produces nothing. All your effort in life, you have nothing to show for, for it. But tonight, I tell you brothers and sisters, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I don't care what they have told you. I don't care what the result tells you. I don't care what they profess unto you before now. I don't care what your body tells you. I don't care what you have seen, what you have faced. I don't care the failure you have faced in the time past, the shortcomings. All I can hear tonight is the sound of the abundance of rain. Say with me, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Even when there is no way forward and you seem to be confused, even when there is no way forward for you and everything looks bleak and there is no way forward for you, you have lost all hopes, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Say with me, I can hear the sand of the abundance of rain. You have fasted. You have done everything possible in order to have breakthrough. You have fasted. You have done everything possible in order for you to receive your healing. And nothing. All you could see is nothing. The report says nothing. Tonight I can hear the sand of the abundance of rain. Say with me, I can hear the sand of the abundance of rain. Say it confidently, I can hear the sand of the abundance of rain. Even when there's no cloud, even when there's no way forward, when you are confused, when you are depressed, when the enemy says there's no way forward for you, when the enemy says there's nothing that can be written about you, there's nothing good can, that can be written about you, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Say with me, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Now rise, let's pray. Lift your hands and bless God because I can hear the sound 
If you listen attentively, if you open your ears tonight, there is a sound of the abundance of rain. There is a sound of the abundance of rain produced by the power in the word of God. There is a sound. Lift your hands and begin to bless him. Bless his holy name. I don't care what has happened before. I don't care what they have told you. I don't care the level of your frustration. I don't care about the past failure. I don't care about what the enemy tells you. I don't care what the doctors told you before now. They said you are going to manage your health. They said you are going to patch it up. But I can hear the sound of the abundance of the rain we fall. That rain we fall. That rain we fall. That rain we fall. Go ahead and bless him. Bless him. Bless him because the rain we fall. It's your life the rain we fall. Le masotalia gaga. Masotolobo. Maliangaga. Raka satala. Le gegegegebe mamoskelia. Le kasosoto. Le arakasatalaba. Ye ye gege. Makaposkelia. Le sasotolobo mamoskelia. Le gazosoto. Mamole boskelia. The power in the world will be demonstrated in your life tonight. You see God at work. I can hear the sand. I can hear the sand. I can hear the sand. Even when they said your womb is useless, I can hear the sand. Even when they said nothing good can be written on concerning you, I can hear the sand. I can hear the sand. I can hear the sun. I can hear the sun. Clearly, I can hear. Just bless his holy name. Just bless him. Just bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Give him praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Brothers and sisters, nothing about your life is hidden away from God. The Bible says the deepest darkness is like a light unto him. I don't know what you have been going through and you need the power which is in the word of God to set you tonight. I have shown you what the power in the word of God can do in the life of a believer. I want you to tell God now. Go ahead and tell him, Lord, this is my situation. This is my condition. I need the power in your word to settle this. I don't want to go home without being touched by you. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. Tell God as it is. Don't coin word. Tell him the way it is. Tell God, I'm expecting your touch tonight. I'm expecting your touch tonight. Aha, uh -huh. thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, let's close our eyes. Somebody's in a mist. You saw yourself in a dream wearing a tattered dress. And you are wondering, what am I putting on? And that has been bothering your heart even up to now. As we close our eyes, if you are the one, just wave your hand. Just wave your hand. Aha. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Listen to what the word of God says. Tonight, that filthy garment on you is removed. In the name.
name of Jesus. That physical garment is being removed from you. You are clothed with the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody say, hey, woman, you have a problem with your, with your, you don't even, you can't even say this is what is happening to me. You have a problem with, with your, with your tummy. Don't let me say your womb, with your tummy. You're always in and out of the hospital. If you are the one, just wave your hand. The Lord will hear you here tonight. The Lord will hear, will hear you here tonight. Uh -huh. Father, I pray for healing. Let healing take place now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your experience is always failure. From one failure to another. Despite all effort to make ends meet. Despite all effort to break through. It is from one disappointment to another. You are here, wave your hand. Everybody close your eyes. Aha. Father, I pray, let there be deliverance. Let there be a deliverance. In the name of Jesus. My sister, you are delivered. My brother, you are set free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody said you used to feel heavy, heaviness on your head. As if you are carrying a load. Many times, woman for what I used to feel very heavy. I mean, there's heaviness on your head. You are here, just place up your hand and place that hand on your head. Where are you? Place that hand on your head. Father, I pray, let that be deliverance. Aha, my brother, you are delivered. You are delivered. You are set free. In the name of Jesus, I command that load that the enemy placed on your head to catch fire. Let the Lord be consumed. In the name of Jesus, you are set free. You are delivered. Thank you, Father. Every terminal disease in this auditorium and in the life of those who are watching online, I command you disappear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says by strap we are healed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. I receive healing for you now. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Aha. You are here and the spirit of death is pursuing you. You know it. There is fear of death in you. The spirit of death is pursuing you. Even in your dream, you see people chasing you. You are here. Lift, lift up your hand. God will deliver you tonight. Where are you? Aha. Father, I ask for deliverance. Lord, you will deliver your daughter. In the name of Jesus, deliver your daughter. In the name of Jesus, I declare, daughter of Zion, you will not die. You will live. You will live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, you are set free. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lift up your hands and begin to bless God. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. In your situation of dryness, there is abundance of rain. Abundance of rain. Sound of abundance of rain. No more famine. No more dryness. No more sickness. In the name of Jesus. If the Son shall set you free, shall be free indeed. The Son of God has set you free. Therefore, you are free. In the name of Jesus. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every yoke is broken. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of God. Ah, thank you, Father. Please lift up your hands. Father, you bless these hands. Cause your blessings to rest upon these hands. Lord, you will prosper them. You will prosper them. You will prosper them. Beyond their imagination, you will prosper them. You will elevate them. You will elevate them. You will promote them. You will surprise them. There are some of you, 
that will be surprised before the end of this month. This month, you'll be surprised. In the name of Jesus, somebody is receiving a letter of promotion. In a few weeks' time, please share the testimony with the pastor. Oh, thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of God. Pray in Jesus' name.